Ever wanted to draft for the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC, the Indigo Disc, but don't know where to start? This is the video for you. What's going on everybody, you got Tone here, back after a long hiatus from the series, but we are back here with another episode in the How to Draft in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet series, the Indigo Disc. Yes, it has been a while since I've done this sort of thing, so um, I know some of you, well not some of you, but the series is kind of like died off a little bit but for the most part I knew at some point I was going to try to bring it back in some capacity and I did promise from the low tier perspective that I would go back to doing and talking about um, type cores analysis and all that stuff from the previous episode and I only felt like since low tier stuff for me ended a while back I figured it made sense to just go back into standard and just keep on that grind so if you guys missed the previous um episode or a playlist of that will be in the description and the previous episode from the low tier perspective will be in the top right hand corner so you can check out that um low tier core and you can look back on all the other episodes that were used that were done in the past so in this episode i will just go back over something i did back in a previous episode on the standard series which is basically just type core analysis and this is basically just talking about synergy specifically from a type advantage and nothing more if anything but there will be some variations so a while ago i used this exact example of talking about type cores in the sense of we know the standard being fire water grass dragon steel fairy and the one that i really want to talk about the most in this scenario is basically the one to the right so you see fire water grass the pretty much the most common type core in Pokemon today. And then Dragon Steel Fairy is right next to it. And then you have the third one, which is basically Fighting Dark and either Psychic or Ghost. Now, the main thing that separates the last core from the other two is in terms of Fighting Dark and either Psychic or Ghost, those cores tend to be a lot more offensive in nature, whereas the other two can be a lot more synergistic offensively and defensively with some slight differentiations. So for example, what I mean by this is, in the sense of fire, water, grass core, while it may be easy to just slap on a fire type or water type and a grass type and call it a day, you do have to keep in mind though that from a typing perspective, fire, water, and grass are all resisted by dragon types. So. It can have some issues depending on what type of those three Pokemon that you get in your core. But in the, in this instance here, for this example, I have Azumarill. It could be Primarina. Having this, having something in that core that has the ability to threaten Dragon type Pokemon is a lot. It's going to be a lot of, very beneficial for you in the long run. In this example, there's Azumarill. Meowskarada has access to Triple Axe so to, tr to threaten those Dragon type Pokemon. And Volcarona, if for some godforsaken reason, is allowed to terror in your, in your draft league, um, Arceus forbid. Um, yeah, you can cover it that way. But just specifically from a typing standpoint and from a cover standpoint, Dragon type Pokemon can give Fire, Water, Grass course trouble if your core does not have access to coverage to deal with said Dragon types. On to Dragon Steel Fairy. Again, a similar concept here where the core can be both offensive and defensive. But at the same time though, Dragon, Steel, and Fairy types all have trouble with opposing Steel types because they don't really have a way of breaking past them. In this instance, there's a Heat Trend on here which deals with opposing Steel type Pokemon fairly well. In the sense of not even having like Latias, it could be Latios, any real Dragon type Pokemon that has access to coverage for Steel types and like Earthquake or Fire coverage. Something along those lines would benefit that. And then fairy type Pokemon, they, some variations have access to fire coverage as well. In the example of Clefable, it does have access to Flamethrower and Fire Blast. So having, picking the right core combination to make sure you're not threatened by opposing steals or having something in that core that can threaten steals that won't make you have to expand your draft for no apparent reason as opposed to just deal which said steel types would be very beneficial. In the sense of the third core, however, because fighting and dark type Pokemon are very rarely defensive with some exceptions. I know for dark types, there's like Mandibuzz. That's like the main one for me that comes up. And for fighting type Pokemon, there aren't really many that are 
defensive in nature. They're just really, really bulky to be called defensive. Or just call them offensive tanks. Great Tusk being the primary example of being an offensive fighting type Pokemon. But more often than not, they're known for their offensive prowess. Nothing more. If they're able to tank hits, that's just an extra boon for you and your team. And for the most part, in terms of defensive synergy, it mainly just comes down to what type of direction you want to go in. If you're going the Psychic route, normally the Psychic type Pokemon would be the one that would be the main one being defensive because there are plenty of defensive Psychic type Pokemon in the metagame. In this example, there's Slowking, there's Galarian Slowking, stuff like Hatterene, Necrozma, Mew, stuff like that. They're, they can be both offensive and defensive in nature, but mostly seen defensively to take out or deal with and switch into other Pokemon that can threaten the fighting and dark type Pokemon. But in this sense, fighting type Pokemon can struggle with those bulky seconds because it does resist fighting. Which is why having a strong dark type Pokemon, like in this instance, Roaring Moon, it could also be like Weavile, Hydreigon, stuff like that. I can threaten those bulky psychic type Pokemon or threaten the bulky, the, um, the ghost types, which are immune to your fighting stab. And the essence of the direction you want to go, fighting plus ghost, it just makes your team a lot more offensive in nature. It doesn't have to be Gengar. Um, in the sense of a draft perspective, maybe if it's allowed in your draft leagues, like a Spectrier, that could also benefit you because fight, because having something, something, something like Spectrier that's that hits strong and hard, and is incredibly fast at hitting, sh as well as being hit, um, hitting hard, just benefit your team so much more than having a Dark type along top of that to add additional pressure to those Psychic and Do opposing Ghost type Pokemon for your Fighting type, just makes things a lot easier for you in the long run. And opposed to the fighting psychic dark sort of aspect, you're relying mostly on your psychic type to come in and put yourself in a situation to pivot around the bulky psychics or put yourself into a situation where you can get in with your other Pokemon to make things easier. So in this instance, with Great Tusk, um, you go into your bulky, they go into their bulky psychic type Pokemon. Instead of going directly into your Roaring Moon, you can pivot out into your Slow King, which then gives you some momentum with Chiller Reception into your Roaring Moon, and that allows you to be a lot more of a threat in that instance. Again, this sort of ex this is basically just an example. The odds of you getting this core is very, very unlikely, but you do have other variations that can work with Great Tusk, like Great Tusk Weavile, Great Tusk Hip um, Hydreigon, just to name a few examples. And then it just basically just comes down to a sense of making sure that the type synergy works in your favor. And basically what I mean by that is having the additional coverage to deal with said, um, with said bulky psychics would be a lot more of a beneficial for you in the long run. Especially considering because fighting psychic dark is so offensive you're more inclined to have defensive checks in the back and making sure you have that defensive core to really shore up your weaknesses because like i said um the third fighting dark psychic is a very more offensive core so because you're putting so much offensive pressure on your opponent the next thing you need to make sure you have is a defensive backbone to fall back on especially if you're not able to uh, progress your win con or your your primary win con or your game plan as a whole so making sure you have a bit more defensive counterplay in the back is a lot more of a thing to take into account when it comes to fighting dark psychic cores or fighting um dark ghost cores as opposed to the other two cores considering that they're a lot more balanced out and you could be a bit more freelance with the rest of your draft but it still does mean that you have to get other stuff to make your draft work. But having the immediate offensive pressure does help out your team a bit more. Because having because getting more having offensive pressure immediately is a bit more difficult to do as opposed to having defensive Pokemon. You can easily get defensive Pokemon towards the back end of your draft, but having immediate offensive pressure can be something that can be overlooked at times because you're just focusing more on the synergy as opposed to focusing more on the on how your team is going to progress and when your draft is sort of like clunky and all over the place like your team may work typing wise but from a synergistic standpoint they could just like fall over the place and you just end up making transactions and you just feel like 
what exactly do I want to accomplish with this team? So, fighting Dark Psychic does give you a lot more of a beneficial for being offensive from the get-go and allowing you to fall back on defensive options later, which I feel like are a bit easier to, to grab. Um, having immediate offense does help you out a lot in the long run, especially considering getting low value, getting value out of your defensive picks in the middle of stages, even towards the back end of your draft, just helps you out so much more in this instance. So, with that being said, um, the idea or the focus of this episode will be focusing more on the fighting dark and psychic core. And it's going to focus around Pokemon that I surprisingly have not used at all during this uh, series. So with that being said, our episode today will be featured around the three Mon core of none other than Darkrai, Galarian, Slowking, and Quaquaval. Um, I'm actually surprised looking back at the series as a whole and realized I did not do any of these Pokemon. So uh, here we are. So regardless, Darkrai is an incredibly powerful Dark type Pokemon, 125 speed. Very, very hard hitting special attacker, nasty plot, sludge bomb for fairy type Pokemon, ice beam for ground types and dragons. And then of course we have Quaquaval being the the main fire type Pokemon to deal with opposing dark type Pokemon can deal with and having part water type as well, being able to hit opposing ground type Pokemon super effectively, opposing fire type super effectively, and of course having access to stuff like Moxie, Aqua at the boost at speed by one stage. And of course, it also has great utility with being able to rapid spin. And of course, both Darkrai and Quaquavor are both weak to fairy. So why not have one of the best fairy checks in the game to in conjunction with these two in Galarian Slowking, which can pivot in on those fairy type attacks, chilly reception to get out into your other threats, and just be a giant nuisance overall with Regenerator and whatnot. So like I said, I was really surprised I did not do any of these Pokemon in any of my previous episodes. So really, it made a lot of fun to actually put this team together in the long run. So that out of the way, let's just quickly run over the rules and roles of the draft. So of course, um, well, disregarding like a few things um, in this draft, like I said, Terra won't be a factor in making the team because I want to make it as much of a natural means and I want Terra to be nothing more than an extension of your play as opposed to using Terra as a means of fixing your weaknesses on your draft. The order of the Pokemon doesn't mean to draft them in that round. Obviously, some Pokemon, some people, some draft league players value a Pokemon higher or lower to, um, in a round personal preference. Alternate options, of course, will be included at the end, so you're not stuck just trying to draft this team and stuck fun wondering where the heck to go if you end up getting a sniper trying to copy this team. So, after selecting a balanced core, which is this isn't really balanced, it's a lot more, it's a bit, it's a somewhat balanced, but it's leaning more offense. We only have one really defensive pivot on this team in Galarian Slowking. Um, ideally, you want to form a defensive core something to benefit and balance out the rest of the team because Darkrai and Quaquaval are very, very offensive in nature. Granted, Quaquaval can be a bit more uh, defensive in nature because water is one of the best defensive typings in the game. And then we have two strong, two or more strong priority options. We technically already have one in Quaquaval because let's get active to Aqua Jet. Technically, we have two since Darkrai does get Sucker Punch. But it's not really something that you'll be thinking about clicking that often when it comes to Darkrai, but the option is there. At least two Stealth Rockers on your draft just to have a little bit of variation for your team. You don't really want to get stuck on a team with having one Stealth Rocker and your opponent knows exactly what to look out for in terms of hazards. Um, spikes and Toxic Spikes are never bad to have on any draft. Thankfully, we do have Toxic Spikes with our Galarian Slowking. One hazard, at least one hazard remover, we already have that in Quaquaval, but you can't extend that if you have Quaquaval and you want to have something else, be the Rapid Spinner or Defogger, then by all means you can go that route. At least two Pokemon with a speed tier at one base, base 110 or higher. Um, hitting, having something faster than something like the Lotties are very, very important to have. We already have one Pokemon like that in Darkrai was a good offensive check to the Lotties, but having another something faster than that as another Pokemon faster than those base 110s or at least tie 110s is very, very beneficial. One Wall Breaker, technically this could be two. Um, Darkrai is a fantastic Wall Breaker in and of its own right, even without Nasty Plot. And then with Quaquaval, technically can also be the same thing if you can snowball the 
moxie boost in conjunction with the aqua steps so yeah wall breaker could definitely beneficial here one ground immunity which is nice you never want to have a team that's super weak to earthquake so having the ability to bypass earthquake was very very nice for any team to have one electric immunity just because you don't want your entire team to get freely volt switched on by stuff like rotom wash or any electric type pokemon in general or any pokemon with volt switch in general you really want to have an electric immunity to really benefit your team one bulky water in this instance quackavol can be the bulky water but if you don't really feel comfortable in using quackavol as a defensive route then by all means you can double up on water typing as well to make it easier for you one grounded poison type pokemon we do have galarian looking to fill that role um, you never really want to be in a situation where your team is overrun by toxic spikes So having that grounded poison is very very important to have One knockoff user technically this team has two dark Ray gets knocked off Quackavol gets knocked off so uh, We're not really worried about having a knockoff user in that sense one fast taunt or encore user just to have a means of this awaiting setup in general and just having a means of like disrupting your opponent from um, doing their thing and potentially winning the game and then of course fire water grass and a dragon steel fairy core while it's not really imperative for most people to have that mindset um, having defensive typing is best to make your team a lot more balanced in the long run so with that out of the way let's jump right in to the team so we have our team um, and this time we're using the UMPO draft for our Three Mon Core here. We are under the assumption that Dark Riot, Galarian, Slowking, and Quackleful will be available to us in this draft with no snipes whatsoever. Um, so yeah, once again, I'm I'm taking part in the UMPL. Uh, so shouts to Danny Mac, Dapper, for all of them um, for letting me use their draft board for this series. <clears throat> So the way the draft happens here is you have 115 points to draft 9 to 11 Pokemon. Um, and there are some, some sections here in terms of terror, which I'll go in towards the end of the draft. So we have our team. We have our three Mon Core, Dark Ray, Galarian, Sloking, and Quackleville, which already has 52 points. We have 63 points to grab eight more Pokemon. So we want to start this, the uh, draft all right here with this uh, round four selection. So round four... We are snagging Thunderous Therian with the selection. Having an electric immunity is really, really important. And again, having an immediate wall breaker is never really bad to have on any draft. And Thunderous Therian just felt like the most, it felt the safest in terms of having 145 base special attack, decent 100, 101 speed, having something faster than, base, than those base 100 is very, very nice. Volt Absorb obviously is just great to block electric type attacks going in that Quackleville. And just having an immediate hard hitting wall breaker, and of course, having access to momentum like Volt Switch, U Turn, and even giving us a third knockoff user. So, yeah, having something like Thunderous Therian to ease the pressure of a Dark Ride being that breaker, having a means to um, weaken those special walls with stuff like knockoff here of heavy duty boots on those special walls. And just being a menace with its 145 space special attack can also set up itself with nasty plot and agility. So yeah, a really, really versatile Pokemon for sure to have in this slot. But yeah, having the electric and ground immunity as well is also a really, really good boon for this team because we didn't have any so far in the draft. So with that out of the way, round number five, we are picking up Don Fan with our round five pick. And Don Fan is mainly here for two things. One... It gives us a ground type Pokemon, so we have an electric, another electric immunity to go along with Thunderous. But the main concept of Dawn Fen here, Stealth Rock, we didn't have a rocker. Gives us priority with Ice Shard, has knockoff. And, but more importantly, it gives us another Rapid Spinner. So having a spinner that's not Quackleville frees up Quackleville to do a lot more things offensively as opposed to wasting a turn clicking Rapid Spin. And of course, it's one of those, Dawn Fans is one of those Pokemon that's never bad to have especially from a, like a mid-round perspective like round four to round six it's like the range of where don fan would go especially considering that people really love to grab their hazard removal or their rapid spinners towards the middle of the draft as early as round four usually some people would reach for round three in the case that it doesn't get back to them but yeah something around round five is a good instance for don fan here 
But like I said, the team needed rocks. We didn't have rocks. Um, gives us a fourth knockoff user. So heavy duty boots are never free on, on this team. Um, having additional priority, um, having the grounded, the ground types. I have another electric immunity. But Don Fan is not really the sturdiest electric immunity because it has poor special defense. So we want to shore up the uh, low special defense here by having some additional support to go along with the rest of the team, which is why round six, we have Florges. And this is basically more so a value pick as well as being a means of saving our points. Because we used to have so many points on our first four picks, we want to be a lot more careful and try to get value out of the low tier stuff without having to break the bank, so to speak. So Floor just provides the team with a wish passer to keep stuff like our Don Fan healthy or the or the, um like the or the Galarian Slowking or the Thunderous. Anything that really lacks some prior um recovery, reliable recovery, is very, very beneficial for Floor just. It has very, very good special defense, makes it easier to take the uh, be another electric check um, as opposed to just relying solely on Thunderous and being able to wish past this off the Dawn Fan, which can deal with poison type and steel type Pokemon that Forges are afraid of and can baton, Forges can baton past the wishes. It can be a Calm Mind Sweeper in its own right. It can be a Choice Scarf user with Trick. So yeah, it really has a lot of um, utility going for it for sure and it benefits the team, like I said, because it has access to Wish. It's a really good Cleric. Well, not Cleric, but a very solid Wish Passer. Gets some momentum with Baton Pass. And can function as a Calm Mind Sweeper or even a Choice Scarf user as a Revenge Killer. So, really, really solid Mon for sure here for round number 6. Then round number 7, we wanted to shore up our Don Fan by basically addressing the Steel type that we don't have on our team. And I figured the best Steel type to grab in this situation would be none other than the Orthworm. And Orthworm provides the team not only with a Steel type, it gives us another physically defensive behemoth to go along with Don Fan. It has base 145 defense, so iron defense body press sets are not the question. But it gives us another stealth rocker. It gives us spikes, which we didn't have either. But more importantly than that, it gives our team a ground immunity. So we don't have to rely solely on Thunderous Therian, trying to switch into those ground type attacks thanks to Earth Eater, which is never a bad thing to have for any draft. So having the immediate ground immunity to pair up with Florges is really, really nice. Um, can also function, like I said, Iron Fence Body Press Sets, Coil Sets. Um, of course, usually in Draft League format, Shed Tail is banned, but that doesn't stop Orthworm from being a fantastic mom with the ability to set up hazards or try to function as an Iron Fence Body Press sort of sweeper in its own right. So, there is Orthworm for round number 7. Round number 8, shoring up the ground type weakness or ground type immunity. We do have Miss Magius here, again, basically another grounded immunity. It gives our team a ghost typing, which I did not mention. Um, having a ghost type is also really, really nice to block rapid spin from our opponents, so you can have the ability to hazard stack without having the worry of switching in through its rapid spin, so you have the means of blocking that. Um, it's made just gonna be very, very bulky. It can be defensive like Will O Wisp, Thunder Wave, Force Utility Support, can Nasty Plot. And in this instance, can be a very good Terra option as well because of the UMPL rules. But aside from that, though, good speed at base 105. Um, just to shore up the gap in our speed tiers between Darkrai and Fundy T. It's a good choice scarf user in its own right, as a good revenge killer, can be specs, can be nasty plot, can be defensive utility with stuff like Wisp, Hex, uh, Pain Split, Destiny Bond, Memento. So we have a lot of utility options to consider to go with Miss Magius, so it's never a really bad Pokemon. And it's a good value pick for sure in round number 8. Um, round 9, we have our Appleton, which is a little bit awkward to say here, but the main reasoning for Appleton here is, first and foremost, there are going to be situations in the draft or in games where you cannot bring Orthworm to games and you want to have another Surefire Ground Resist. Appleton fits the bill here. Um, it's a low, it's a good low budget pick being a Grass type and a Dragon. Um, so you have that Ground Resist in the back. You have, and while it may be four times weak to Ice, it does have access to Thick Fat to take those Ice hits a little bit easier and take those Fire hits a little bit easier as well. And in conjunction with Terrestrialization, it does become a very, very solid tank. It does have 
um, good defenses to the point where you can do like iron defense body press. Apple acid is a very annoying move for opponents to click and they don't have the grass immunity. Having something that just lowers your opponent's special defense by one stage every single time it's clicked is like really, really bad. And overall, it's a good solid utility mod. It won't show up much to games, but considering what the team lacked here in particular, it fit the build just right for sure. And then the last two mods here on this team can be interchanged, to be perfectly honest here. So round 10, we have Oracorio, and in the UMPL, you get access to all four forms of Oracorio. So in this instance, Oracorio provides the team with another flying type. Um, it's a flying type with actual flying stab, which Thunder Therian does not have. And of course, Revelation Dance in conjunction with having Quiver Dance, so you have a low tier um, sweeper on your hands with Quiver Dance, Revelation Dance, Hurricanes. You have access to all four forms, so you can be Bile, Sentu, Pom Pom, or Pow. Although the last one's pretty forgotten, to be perfectly honest. But regardless, um, Oracorio does provide the team also with additional removal with Defog if you want to go that route as opposed to relying solely on your Rapid Spinners. Um, gives you momentum with U-Turn, has Taunt. So yeah, a good amount of utility you get out of this one Pokemon for 4 points. And then for the last Mon on the team, we do have Ambipom for 5 and basically the reasoning for Ambipom is it's having a mother Pokemon faster than 110 speed. It gives us Fake Out to go along with our Stealth Rock, our Hazard Support in general. Really, really nice in conjunction with Toxic Spikes to flinch the opponent and make them take more damage from their, from the poison damage. And on top of that, it does give access to another knockoff user, U-turn for momentum. So yeah, a good utility mon for five points here. And for the most part, in terms of the UNPL Terra rules, only Pokemon six points and below can Terrasilize, with some exceptions. Unfortunately, one of those exceptions does extend to Oracorio, because Terra in conjunction with Revelation Dance is just way too strong. I would know, because I used it twice in my in the past. Um, I'm still kind of surprised they actually made Miss Magus um, Terra uh, option available, because Miss Magus is still one of the best. It's one of the better low tier Terras allowed in the UMPL for sure. Um, and then for the other thing to take into account is uh, the budget is only 12 points, so you cannot just Terra all the all the Pokemon six points and below. You had to pick between Appleton and Ambipom. In this case, you can lean more towards Appleton just to give you a bit more defensive utility with your Terra options. But if you care more for your offense, then by all means pick Ambipom. So with that out of the way, we will jump right in to the alternate options for the draft. Now before I go any further, I will say, in terms of Quackleval, if you don't get Quackleval round 3, you technically have two other options. If somehow Urshifu Rapid Strike is still there round 3 and Quackleval is not, get Urshifu Rapid Strike. Nothing will change, with some variations in the points. And if they're both gone, there's also Keldeo. Granted, Keldeo is not really a round 3 Pokemon. It's a bit more one-dimensional, but it can still function as that water fighting type for sure. So, you have your options if you don't get Quackleval. As for the rest of the draft, as opposed to Thunder Asterion, the Thunder is Incarnate. Um, the main reasoning again for Thunder Asterion was the Vol was the Electric Immunity. Thunderous Eye does come with the advance of being faster than 110 speed at 111. You have nasty plot in terms of in conjunction with stuff like Prankster. So you can be a bit more of a menace with like Prankster T-Wave stuff to slow down faster threats. Another Pokemon to consider is Kilowattro, which does essentially the same thing without the setup. And somehow by the power of RCS of Zapdos mixed round four, and it's there in front of you, you can grab that too. But the main reason with Amnesterian again is to have the certified electric immunity to help out our Don fan. Um, speaking of which, as opposed to Don Fan, this is basically just comes down to whether or not you care about your removal. So if you're okay with specifically having Quackleval as your means of rapid spinning, and you're okay with just having that as your means of being of hazard removal, <clears throat> then you have other options. You have stuff like Mammal Swine, which is a bit more offensive in nature. Um, ice and ground typing, so you have strong priority with Ice Shard. You keep the knockoff user, you still have access to knockoff. Um, ice and ground is a very good offensive typing in general. It just gives you another hard-hitting attacker overall. 
Um, for other low tier stuff, there's Rhyperior. Even going on the line, there's stuff like um, Torterra to take into account if you if you care for like Shell Smash stuff and whatnot. <clears throat> Even going on the line to like Gastrodon, Quagsire. Um, if you don't care for rocks at all, <laughs> there's Ursaluna. Um, but I highly doubt Ursaluna would be like a round five pick, especially if you value it high. But if it's there, there you have your options. Then for round six, as opposed to Florges, there's Sylveon. They're both Wish Pastors in their own right. Um, the main reasoning for Florges here is Florges is three points cheaper than Sylveon. Um, Sylveon does have access to stronger Fairy type stab with Pixelate, but um, the option is still there nonetheless. There's other stuff you can consider, like maybe if you don't care for Wish and you want more Hazard support, there's Klefki. If you want to go that route, there's Tinkaton for another bulky steel with access to hazards that has good special defense. So yeah, you can go that route too if you don't care for the wish support. Then next up, as opposed to Orthworm, there's Bronzong. Um, if you want to shell out a bit more points, there's also Skarmory. Um, although people, some some draft league players are kind of hit and miss on Skarmory because it feels a bit too passive. But both of them are just hazard setters with the ability to be a nuisance. The only thing is with Skarmory, Skarmory is a ground immunity and a steel type with access to recovery and roost, can whirlwind to phase things out. And it has its other utilities as well with stuff like taunt and whatnot. Um, but the only downside to that is it's a steel type that doesn't resist ice. But then again, both Orthworm and Skarmory do have pretty bad um, special defense. So. Um, take what you may from that situation. Then, round number eight, as well as Miss Magius, there's Decidueye, Bramblegast. Um, if you want to shell a bit more points and you don't care much for the ground immunity, there's also Sinistra to take into um, account there as well. Both <laughs> Sinistra gives you a uh, Calm Mind Sweeper with access to Strength Sap, Bramblegast gives you another Spiker with access to Strength Sap, and Sinistra is just a bit more offensive with Sword Stance. Um, can be another emergency def um, hazard remover with defog, you turn for momentum, shall for for priority. So you have your options in that regard. Uh, Appleton, basically the idea with Appleton is just having a ground resist that's not just um, with good defensive utility, 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 excuse me. So as opposed to Appleton, you can grab, if it's available, something low tier, like I already mentioned um, Torterra, um, for the Dawn fan pick, but if you want to go a little bit lower than that, there's also stuff like Vileplume. It gives you another grounded poison type Pokemon, but um, it still fits the role as being a decent ground check. It doesn't resist ground, but it does have its uses. Um, if you want to go a little bit lower, um, there's stuff like Arboliva, there's Wo Chen. If you want, if you don't care for doubling up on grass types, I mean, not grass types, if you don't care for doubling up on dark types, excuse me. And then you can go that route and even a bit more obscure um although usually if it's there you can grab it but usually like a mid-tier mod there's also Breloom to consider as a decent ground type check it's not the best um from a defensive standpoint but it's really really good because it have a ground resist with access to strong priority with mock punch and then for Oracorio, Oracorio could essentially be any offensive flying type Pokemon here. So stuff like Braviary, Hisuian Braviary, if you don't care for doubling up one psychic type Pokemon, is one of the options to consider here. It's a bit more point, but basically the idea behind this is just having an offensive flying type to go along with Thunderous. Um, although it's not really flying spam in general, it's still a good, decent flying type Pokemon overall. Uh, the other thing that Oracorio does provide you since we have access to all four forms is a fire type, which we did not have. So as opposed to Oracorio from a fire type perspective, <clears throat> um, like low tier stuff would be something like um, Pyroar, which is a little bit like obscure in some instances. Colossal is also a choice here just to have another hazard setter with access to rapid spin. It gives you a fire immunity. Um, a little bit earlier in the draft you can get something like a Delphox but the other reasoning for the Oracorio is that's having the other additional ground immunity especially if we don't get access to um, 
Orthworm, or even Skarmory for that sense. If you want to shell out more points. And then lastly, Ambipom. Ideally, you want to keep Ambipom, but it depends on whether or not you get Thunderous Darien or Thunderous Incarnate. If you get Thunderous Incarnate, you can get a different normal type Pokemon, something like a Zangoose. Would also be beneficial here. But really, any hard-hitting fast normal type Pokemon would definitely suffice in the situation. So something like a Sinchino, something like a Mouse Hold. I already mentioned Zangoose. Um, Zangoose is pretty much the safest choice because it's definitely a low tier Mon that's definitely not going to see much um, play. Well, I say play, but not much like... I'm not going to see much um, usage. As, I mean, it's not going to be a consideration for Pokemon for um for someone to draft. And even going further down the line, there's also something like a Kamala. But this team is really desperate for hazard removal to the point where you want to grab a Kamala anyway. But if you want it, you can grab it. So, with that being said, that is going to be the episode for ep that's gonna be it for episode seven of the How to Draft series. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy the um, the video. If you did, feel free to leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I am on my way to one thousand. I'm trying to hit one k subscribers by the end of the year, and I can only do that without your support. Um, I hope you guys find these videos informational and insightful. I really do enjoy putting these type of videos together, and it was really, really fun to do um, a core that I did not uh, have been touched at all. So it was really, really fun to put this team together. So. Um, again, thank you guys again for watching the video. Thank you guys again for the UMPL for letting me use their draft. And there will be more videos like this coming up in the future. So be on the lookout for that. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. And until the next time, this is Tone, signing off for now. Peace out.